Okay, hi there and welcome to another essay plan video. Uh, this time it's on microeconomics and it concerns mergers and consumer welfare. Our focus in this question is the merger between Amazon and Whole Foods. This is a big, big area. In 2017, so perhaps a question for 2019, Amazon made a £10 billion deal with Whole Foods, an organic food specialiser, and it's part of the general debate about the increasing market concentration, the increasing market power, if you like, in many industries, food retailing, obviously, airlines, banking, telecommunications, and many others. Here's a question that we'll work through in terms of our essay plan. Using your own knowledge, assess the extent to which mergers, such as Amazon's and integrating with Whole Foods, are likely to be, to be in the interests of consumers. Use diagrammatic analysis. In other words, use diagrams to support your answer. Okay, important. Uh, just a bit of context here. Amazon's market reach and scale will no doubt be well known to you. It's the world's biggest online retailer now. It's got a range of over 250 million different products, including on the Amazon Marketplace platform. They have nearly 50% now of US online commerce market share. Nearly half of United States households are subscribed to the Amazon Prime membership scheme. Um, the big, big competitor now in search, half of all online shopping searches start directly on Amazon. It's got nearly a third of global cloud computing revenues. Amazon Web Service, for example, much bigger than the Microsoft's competitor. It's the biggest seller of footwear and clothing online. And of course, they bought Whole Foods in 2017 for £10 billion. Uh, that is a US-based, has a presence in the UK, but a US-based grocery retailer with a big emphasis on organic natural food products, typically, not always, but typically selling to slightly higher income consumers. Amazon, of course, has grown quickly through acquisition. One of the good, it's a great example of a company where they have made some significant purchases over the years. Whole Foods, by far their biggest acquisition, but Zappos, Twitch, Kiva Systems, Love Film, Audible, they've made some sizable acquisitions over the years, whilst at the same time, of course, growing very quickly through organic sales. Whole Foods has about nearly just under 500 stores worldwide, the majority of which are in, are in the United States. Okay, that's by way of background to the question. We're going to work through a plan, how to, how to write a good essay to this question. Using your knowledge, assess the extent to which mergers such as Amazon integrating with Whole Foods is likely to be in the interest of consumers. For a 25 mark essay, we're looking to build two main points of analysis. Evaluate as we go, always leave two lines between paragraphs so the examiner can make a clear levels of response mark on your paper. Okay, my first point is both that the, my two KA points, by the way, will be arguing that mergers can be in the interest of consumers. My evaluation points will be arguing the counter, counter arguments that mergers and takeovers can be against the interests of consumers using Amazon, essentially as my example. My first point is that Amazon's integration with Whole Foods might be in the interest of consumers because it drives the growth of the business and growth leads to lower prices and increased consumer surplus. In particular, because Amazon's objective is probably growth max or sales max rather than profit maximization. And whilst it doesn't target specific outputs, their drive to increase sales can be shown on an analysis diagram. We can illustrate how costs, uh, how consumer surplus is higher than profit max. I'll show you the diagram once I've been through the plan with you. The, the counterpoint and it's also, by the way, this is a good evaluation phrase to use. Let me just highlight for you in red. A counter argument, it's a good phrase to use in the exam, is that the market power of Amazon is having a negative impact on other competitors and suppliers. So you're talking here about the negative impact on suppliers and competitors. Many jobs have been lost in businesses that have closed, including Toys R Us, smaller retailers unable to cope with the low-cost strategy of Amazon 
and there are fears that Amazon is a factor behind, in the UK context, the decline of the high street. Smaller grocers just don't have the financial clout, the financial resources to make those investments in technology and compete, for example, with Amazon Fresh. The counterpoint is that Amazon's, the consumers benefit from lower prices, but uh, costs in terms of jobs lost in other industries, other businesses, and the decline of the high street is a negative for consumer interest. My second point is really going to be very theoretical, um, hopefully applied, but mergers such as the Amazon Whole Foods one can, can be in the consumer interest. Always go back to the question, uh, whilst mergers in theory are not ideal, in reality, in practice, Amazon's internal economies of scale, and I call it hyper-efficiency in, in purchasing and logistics and delivery, that hyper efficiency has lowered their long and average cost and increased the speed and reliability of their services. A good example is the drone technology investments they're making and trialing in urban areas. Gains in productive and dynamic efficiency can improve outcomes for consumers. In this kind of question, you cannot go wrong if you discuss different types of economic efficiency. Allocative, to do with price, productive to do with cost, dynamic to do with the quality of service and, and innovation. And I'm, I'm linking here to an analysis diagram shows the benefits for consumers from internal economies of scale. I'll come back to that diagram in a second or two. So my second point is, is, about, is about cost, economies of scale and dynamic efficiency. However, in evaluation, uh, again, a little, a little Bridging word there. I mean, that's, it's a bit sounds a bit clunky, doesn't it? In evaluation is a, is a way of just telling the examiner this is an evaluation paragraph. Consumer welfare can be diminished when dominant businesses such as Amazon uh, use their monopsony power. This is a really key point. Okay, monopsony is one of those big current topics at the moment. So welfare can be diminished when businesses use their monopsony power to lower prices paid to suppliers, and of course consumers work for those businesses too, and in theory, pay lower wages to their employees, including those in warehouses, than if the labor market was more competitive. Employees and suppliers, little typo there, employees and suppliers are key stakeholders in a discussion about market power and welfare. Amazon, uh, and that, so that's it, that's my point. And Amazon benefits from lower costs and higher profits, but also tax avoidance is now a huge issue. So my argument is that Amazon has market power. Yes, lower prices for consumers, but actually think about suppliers, think about the labour market, think about tax. I'm trying essentially to bring those three points together. Uh, what about the diagrams? Uh, you need to use good diagrams to support your analysis. Cannot stress this enough for 2019. Examiners are looking for really good diagrams. Uh, I argued in my first point that Amazon is a fast growing company and maybe they're targeting growth maximization rather than profit maximization. So that would invite a good diagram, wouldn't it not? Here's the diagram showing the two outputs. A profit maximization is where MR meets MC. Growth max is where cost and revenue essentially the same you're just making normal profit q1 is a much bigger output than the profit maximization develop the diagram please develop the diagram another key message for 2019 examiners want you to show for example that different objectives lead to different prices using this analysis which of course is a simplification so for example if you maximize sales that will lead to on average, lower prices in the market. That's a good diagram to make it even better if you're confident with the concepts, build in the welfare consequences. So our profit maximization at P2, consumer surplus is the area ABC, below the demand curve and above the price. But if you sales max, can you see what happens to consumer surplus? It goes up to area ADE, an increase of BDEC. So this diagram is hinting that a fast growing company targeting growth max might actually lead to lower prices for consumers, yes, but an increase in consumer surplus. Now that's really a key analysis point which would score very well on an A-level paper. My second diagram, if 
you have time, many students don't have time to do this, but if you have time, you could draw an economy of scale diagram that Amazon, for example, could be operating on these cost curves down here, MC2, AC2, much bigger scale of production than perhaps MC1, AC1 for a smaller retailer. As a result, yes, they're making a bigger profit shown in this yellow area, but prices have fallen from P1 to P2. And again, consumer surplus is higher. So economies of scale, internal economies of scale can lead to higher profits, but also lower prices. They're kind of win for consumers and a win for, for shareholders. Now, as we always say in these plans, the final conclusion is going to be crucial in 2019 in terms of getting those top, top evaluation marks. Your exam board will require a different amount from you in terms of your final conclusion. And oftentimes, what you can write depends on how much time you have left at the end of the exam. What I've done here is I've developed a slightly longer conclusion than I would normally do um, just to show you what's possible. Let's go through it together. There's a trend towards oligopoly in many industries. And the Amazon Whole Foods merger is a good example of consolidation uh, that has increased the market power of one of the world's biggest businesses. Mergers tend to increase market power, which in theory, in theory, OK, and again, I'm going to highlight this, which in theory allows consumers, companies, sorry, to increase profits by hiking, by raising price. The key is whether the efficiency gains that come from economies of scale are eventually passed down to consumers through lower prices. It is important to judge each business and each industry on a case by case basis. That phrase there, everybody, that phrase there is evaluation gold dust. It's important to judge each business, each industry on a case by case basis. Although in many ways Amazon is, Amazon is dominant, Amazon is dominant in the United States and increasingly in the UK, of course. In reality, that share of the market in the US is less than 5%. And the industry is also being shaken up by the fast growth of the deep discounters, the rise of Aldi and Lidl, for example. We've seen that in the UK. It's happening in the States too. On balance is a lovely evaluation phrase to use. On balance. I would argue that Amazon's low price strategy and heavy investment in logistics and service innovation is good for consumers in the long run. So I'm going back to the question. I'm also hinting at the percent of time and perspective and provides a benchmark for other retail businesses to aim for. However, another evaluation with that. However, the impact of monopsony power and wages is a concern. And so too are the ways in which large corporations are able for example, through shadow pricing to reduce their tax liabilities. I found out, for example, that Amazon last year made about £80 million profit in the UK, but only paid about £1, £2 million in corporation tax. Overall, provided a market is contestable, firms with market power will deliver value to customers because of the threat of competition. That, of course, is massively important in a contestable market. Amazon looks unassailable at the moment, but the retail industry is dynamic and their market dominance cannot assume, cannot be assumed to be permanent. Well, lots in there. I think it's a long, longish conclusion, but sometimes exam boards want you to come to a developed conclusion. You need a conclusion to get those top marks for analysis. It really is a question of have you got your timing right in the exam so that you have some time to develop a really good conclusion to your essay. Now, you only have to develop two points of analysis, make two relevant evaluation points that, in theory, should give you time for conclusion. In practice, we'll see. For the exam, make sure you're confident in using concepts such as consumer and producer surplus, and also, critically, know the different types of economic efficiency. And also be aware that mergers and takeovers, the sort of stuff we've been talking in this essay, they can have significant effects on different stakeholders and include that in your answer. OK, thank you very much indeed for joining in this microeconomic essay plan.